Hi everyone and welcome back to Sandy Says. I'm so excited to make this video for you today. Today's video is going to be what to do with your toddler while your newborn is nursing. So my daughter was born two months before my son's second birthday. Um, my son is a, was a very, and still is a very energetic little boy. It was very hard to occupy him. And my daughter was fused to me. I had to hold that child for the first like six months of her life and she cluster fed. So she nursed all the time. So here are a few things that I did that they were a huge help for me. And I hope that they are a huge help for you too. Hi guys, Sandy from the future here. While editing, I realized I forgot to tell you the most important part, and that is create a yes room for your child. So for us, that was a baby gate in the living room that was big enough to wrap all the way around the couch. Um, I had a, a North States play yard with some extensions connected together, and there was absolutely nothing in that area in which uh, my son could get into that I would have to tell him no he had access to everything so my number one tip is definitely to create a yes area so the first thing is sensory bins um, and basically what I would do is I would set my son up at um, in his high chair or at the kitchen table depending on like sometimes he'd be like strapped in at the kitchen table and then I would put sand or cotton or fabric all kinds of stuff in down in the box and then we would bury cars or I would bury puzzle pieces or anything like that and he would scoop them out and then like put the puzzle pieces together or he would just play in it um this actually took a good bit of training to do with him because in the very beginning he just wanted to completely dump them out so if your child is mature enough for sensory bins I would um check I would look into those. Um, I actually, a long time ago, so please excuse me for the quality of that video, but a long time ago, I made a video on sensory bins, so I will link that up above. Um, and the next thing I did was I had toys that were specifically only to, use, only to be used during nursing. So they were things like he had the crayons that were shaped like an egg that would fit in his little hand. Um, we even did Crayola washable finger paint, um, specific cars that he loved. We used a lot of um, Crayola color wonder markers. They are the markers that only show up on the specific Crayola color wonder paper and those come with stamps and we used a lot of those as well. When he was doing the crayons, um, we used specifically just like this Melissa and Doug um, coloring book. And the reason this coloring book is better than the others is because the pages are huge. Um, but you could use any coloring book that, you know, or just, you know, straight paper or whatever, anything that your kid loves that will hold their attention. Um, and then the last thing is this Melissa and Doug polka dot book. Um, you can get these on Amazon now for like $12. When I first ordered these, they were really hard to get and they were like $20, but um, they've really come down in price. And basically they've got these little, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera. They have these little dots all throughout the book and you push that little dot in and it makes noise and then it makes it so you can push it through on the other side. These will occupy both of my kids for hours. Even now that my son is four, we still use these. Um, and basically what I did was I kept those items in a bin and I kept them like on top of the refrigerator and I only pulled that bucket out when my daughter was nursing and he only got one or two items and then that way I could recycle the items throughout the day. Um, that was a huge help. It was because they were new to him every single time that he saw them. Um, but a lot of arts and crafts that were age appropriate and things that I wouldn't risk him putting in his mouth or choking. Um, sometimes you'll run into that problem if you're doing sensory bins. You know, like you'll watch a video on sensory bins and I'll tell you to put rocks in them. Well, that's not feasible when you're not right there with your child. So that was why we did things like sand and stuff like that. So that was option number two. Um, option number three is actually the TV. Um, and what, so for myself personally, not that there's anything wrong with letting your small children watch TV, but for us, we tried to not, we tried to not let my son watch any screen time before he was two years old. That completely went out the window when his baby sister was born. So I didn't, I tried really hard to only reserve his screen time for 
one time when his sister was nursing. So if his sister nursed four times a day, in the morning he might play with the crayons, in the afternoon he might play with his polka dot book, and then the third time she nursed he might um, get to watch a show on YouTube or on Netflix. So before my children were like the age of three, pretty much the only thing that they watched on TV was um, Dave and Ava on YouTube. Uh, my sister's son really liked super simple songs on Netflix. There's also a show on Netflix now that's called Go Buster Go and that is a hit with my um, two-year-old so that might be something you can look into. And the last thing I, well I have two more things I want to, I want to suggest. The second to last is putting your older child in the high chair with the four-point harness and then giving them snacks um and what i would do is i would put my son in the high chair and i would face the high chair to the tv so that was feasible because our living room was off of our kitchen at the time um so i would face it towards the tv and i would give him all of his cheerios or whatever it was that he was going to be eating and i would let him eat his snacks and then when he was done with his snack then that's when i would turn the tv on um, or sometimes we didn't have to do that sometimes he would just sit contently in his high chair sometimes he would fall asleep in his high chair and sometimes he would talk to me, but it just depended on what was going on for that day. Um, and then the last thing that we did quite a bit, we usually could only get away with this once a day, maybe once every other day, was sometimes I could just let my son sit on my leg, right, just right here next to me, kind of snuggled up on the other side, and his sister could sit in, you know, lay in my arm, and she could nurse on her nursing pillow, and he would talk to her, we would talk about his sister, we would talk about just different things, we would do practice shapes, we would practice numbers, we would practice letters, he would counter toes, he would ask questions about what she was doing, and I would say she's drinking mommy's milk, just all, whatever the conversation is that you have with a two-year-old. Um, but what that did was, I, I feel like it really helped to bond my siblings. It helped him to feel like he was a part of her and that me having to spend time with her wasn't taking away from his time with her. And then also like for me as a mom, like seeing my kids being together and interacting together and not having my son like pitch a fit while his sister was getting the attention, uh, that was good for my soul too. It always made me feel good and always made me get all the feels when my kids kind of did that. So um, don't be afraid to let your toddler be a part of baby brother or sister because that's what they want. They just want to feel included in what's going on. It's just hard because they don't know how to handle everything that's going on. So, and my son was actually able to do quite a bit with his sister. He was able to put diapers in the trash. Um, if I dropped a bottle, he could pick it up. Sometimes it was like asking Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy to do things because like, like, hey, can you, can you pick that up for me? And then you'd have to ask him like 25 times that he would come back with, you'd ask him for a diaper and he would come back with wipes and then you'd ask him, You'd say, no, I need the diaper, and you'd come back with socks and just silly things like that. But, um, you know, that's just part of it when they're that close together. So, sorry, y'all, a little off topic. But, um, so those are my tips for what to do with your toddler while your baby is nursing and how to keep them engaged. If you have any questions about parenting two under two um, or two toddlers at one time, I am, I feel like I'm through the worst of it. My children are now two years old and four years old. Um, and I feel like we have some pretty good systems down and in place. I am by no means a parenting expert, but we really do enjoy our time together. Um, and we have figured out how to live life with kids 20 months apart. So if you have any questions on how to do anything, if you're in the thick of it, I would love to lend my thoughts, opinions, tips, tricks, mom's hacks, whatever you want to call them. Um, so just comment down below and let me know. If you're new, hit the subscribe bell. I upload every week. And as always, thanks for watching.